ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help. Good evening. I'm calling to order this meeting of the Arlington Select Board on June 10th, 2024. I'm Select Board Chair Steve DeCourcy. Tonight's meeting is being conducted in a hybrid format, format consistent with provisions in state law for remote participation in public meetings. Before we begin, please note the following. This meeting is being conducted in the Select Board Chambers and over Zoom. It is being recorded and simultaneously broadcasted on ACMI. People wishing to join the meeting by Zoom may find information on how to do so on the town's website. People participating, either in person or by Zoom, are reminded that you may be visible to others and that if you wish to participate, we ask you to provide your full name and place of residence in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. Both Zoom participants and persons watching on ACMI can follow the posted agenda materials found on the town's website, specifically the select board agendas and minutes page. If technical difficulties sever the remote connection to one or more participants and efforts to reconnect within a reasonable period of time fail, the in-person meeting will continue at the discretion of the chair, provided that a quorum of the board is physically present. Zoom participants are encouraged to retain the phone number provided in their confir confirmation email for a backup audio connection to the meeting. There'll be Let's see, there'll be, I believe, at least one opportunity for public participation tonight. Yeah, we will have open forum tonight, so there'll be an uh, opportunity there for the public to participate. If you're attending by Zoom and want to participate, please raise your hand when I announce that public comment is open. We have 16 agenda items, including 26 appointments this evening, so let's see how much of the town's business we can get done tonight. And with that, I will move on to our consent agenda. Several items on that. Item two is the minutes of the meeting, May 20th, 2024. Item three are reappointments, and I'm gonna read it by committee. The names of the individuals being reappointed are listed there. The ACAC committee, committee on disabilities, constables, CPA committee, equal opportunity advisory committee, the library board of trustees, the Open Space Committee, the Park and Recreation Committee, Human Resource Board, Veterans Council, and the Envision Arlington Standing Committee, and all of these are reappointments for, for those committees. Item four, we have four requests for contractor drain layer licenses, JET Excavation, Power Paving and Construction Inc., BG Construction LLC, Bay State Piping Company. Uh, item five is a request for a special one-day beer and line, wine license on June 22nd, 2024 at Robbins Memorial Town Hall for a private event, uh, Brian and Judith Player. Item six is a request for a special one-day beer and wine license on June 23rd, 2024 at the Robbins Memorial Town Hall for a private event, Kristen Boardman. And item seven is a, a request for a special one-day beer and wine license for June 29th, 2024, at the Whittemore Robbins House for a private event, Angela Elias. Um, that is the consent agenda. I'll turn to members for any motions or comments. Move approval. Second. Any other questions? Um, uh, quick, Mr. Uh, Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Quick comment on number five. I mean, it's a dance party for a 60th wedding anniversary i just like to say you know i am all totally on board with someone having a dance party you know dance, they didn't dance. mention they didn't mention the dj but more power to them that's all thank you mr okay. chair thank you mr diggins okay on a motion for approval by mrs mahan seconded by mr hurd all in favor say aye. aye aye okay it is a unanimous vote uh next is item eight for approval housing family fundraiser saturday june 15th 2024 from 2 to 4 p.m at Whittemore Park. Uh, is the proponent here this evening? I don't know if they're... Zoom. Yes. Oh, on Zoom, okay, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Thank Park. You. <laughs> Excuse me. If you would just unmute yourself when you're ready. Hello. Hi, if you could introduce yourself and uh, just tell us about what you're re 
requesting in the event that you want to run? So hi, I'm Asra Nurallahi. I attend Arlington High School as a freshman. And I'm a part of an organization called YSEP, which stands for Youth Service Engagement Program. And for our final project, as being part of this program, we have to have a service project. And for my service project, I was planning on hosting an event, a fundraising event, to be more specific, for all of Arlington to fundraise for housing families and their good cause of raising money to support those experiencing homelessness. And so the event was, um, the plan is to have it on this coming Sunday, or Saturday, sorry, um, the 15th. And originally it was going to be in the town hall garden, but I think a few things came up there. So now that date is not available. So I was uh, hoping we could get it moved, we could move the location. And the requested location now is at, in front of the Jefferson Cutter House uh, in, in Arlington Center? Yes. Okay. Great. Okay. Any uh, questions, motions, comments from board members? Uh, Mr. Hurd. Hi. Um, sounds like a great event and a great school project. Just a couple questions, and I don't know if I missed this somewhere in the information, about, but it says music. Um, what type of music are you, are you going to have? Where will it be located on the on the uh, cut house lawn? Um, so I have contacted Miss Way, which is the Arlington Performing Arts Department, um, and she has helped me organize with a couple of people to have like a small quartet playing, uh, so uh, classical music. And since it's going to be only three, four people, I don't think if it's going to be much of a problem as for the placement. Okay. That sounds good. And is it, do you envision that the event will be a few tables, people walk through, ask questions, or I think, what's, what's uh, sort of so the we're format? Gonna have, oh, sorry. Uh, we're going to have Dell's and ice cream available as concessions so people can purchase them. But it's more of like a you come in and maybe learn a little bit, because um, one of the people from Housing Families is going to be there. So if people have questions, they can ask her. Um, and they're, it's mostly going to be like they can come and get purchase something and fundraise, help with the fundraiser. And yeah, it's mostly going to be that. So it's going to be a short event, like a max two hours. Okay, thank you. I'll move approval. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Mr. Diggins? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll second. Great. Any other questions, comments for board members? Okay. On a motion for approval by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. Diggins. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Best of luck with the event. Thank you so much. All set. Okay. All right. Now on to appointments. Item 9 is an appointment to the tree committee. Jackie Anderson for a term to expire June 30th, 2026. Good evening, Ms. Anderson. I, yeah, if you could just tell us a little bit about yourself and, and why you're interested in serving on the tree committee. Yeah, so I'm Jackie Anderson. I work as a conservation agent and assistant town planner in Drakeit, and I recently earned a master's in environmental science and policy where I focused on tree canopy and tree equity. Um, I've been attending the tree committee since February, and I've been really excited to see all the different programs they're working on, and I'm really Looking forward to the opportunity of continuing that work. Great, thank you. Okay, I'll turn to board members for questions. Has motion, Mr. Helmuth. Thank you. I will enthusiastically move approval. Um, Arlington, it, it, it's, it's just routine almost that we have people come before us who are just exceptionally <laughs> qualified. But uh, here, you fit the bill, and it's, it's a delight to see your resume and your current work. Um, I'm, I'm curious if you have a sense since you're in the field for. Um, if you've looked at other tree committees in other towns and you know have any ideas for what this one might do next yeah i've been looking into it for sure and i'm um i do think that our town has a very strong tree committee compared to many other towns but we can always make it even better so i'm hoping to look at more um, policies in different towns to compare and see if there's any ideas great yeah i think it'd be worthwhile thank you very much 
Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Uh, Mr. Diggins. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll second. And I also suggest that you pull the microphone up and a little closer to yourself. Yeah, great. Thank you. You know, so you have to be, as Mr. Helmuth said, it's impressive um, CV you have here. You know, I almost want you for the Transportation Advisory Committee here, I mean, given your experience, you know, uh, with transportation issues, I mean, especially in Newton, you know. Uh, so, um, you know, the, the problem, though, with being on the Tree Committee and TAC is that they meet on the same night at the same time. You know, even with Zoom, you can only do so much, you know. So, but no, no, I really welcome your board and uh, your experience with Invasives, I think, will comp complement I mean, other work that we're doing here in town. So, um, thanks again. Thank you. Okay. No, thank you for your interest. I was impressed. I saw your reference to the uh, Boston Urban Wilds program. It caused me to visit the city's website to see what that was all about. Sounds like very interesting work. Uh, okay. So on a motion for approval by Mr. Helmuth, seconded by Mr. Diggins. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you for your willingness to serve. Okay, the next item, I'm just going to have a little bit of an introduction on this one. Um, so we have six members to the Youth Counseling Center Advisory Board. And, and um, last year, the 2023 town meeting, we amended an earlier vote in changing the name of the Board of Directors of Youth Services to the Arlington Youth Counseling Center Advisory Board. Um, also changed the membership criteria um, and I believe this board now becomes the second one in town, second committee, that has term limits uh, through, the, through their charge. And it's a little different. A lot of times you see committees in our town bylaws. This was done through warrant article all the way back in 1962 and then amended in 1979 and again last year. So there are several members who had served on the board who are coming off. Um, and after our appointments, I'll, I'll reference that. But I think the best thing to do, the six individuals, maybe come up um, two at a time and, and just introduce yourselves to the board. Now, uh, Fabian Bain and Janet Marsden. Sure. Fabian, oh, oh, by Zoom? Yes. Okay, perfect. Good evening. Good evening, Ms. Marsden. Yeah, why don't we start with you and if you could just tell us a little bit about your interest in, in, in serving on the Youth Counseling Center Advisory Board. So, lifelong Arlington resident, um, raising my children here now in Arlington, and um, I also am a lifelong career um, devotion to serving with the mentally ill homeless of the city of Austin. Um, I've done that for the past 36 years, um, four of which have been the director, and for 28 I was the assistant director. Um, over the past period of time from COVID, I've seen a drastic shift in what mental health and mental illness is looking like, vastly of which is our young adults and youth today, and always trying to figure out a way to give back to the community, and I think trying to figure out how to strengthen the agency, and along with my skill set, makes me a good fit Great. for the board. Great. Thank you. Um, okay. And, and uh, Ms. Bain? It's Good evening. Good evening. How are you, everyone doing? Um, so, yes, so my name is uh, Dr. Fabian Thane. I'm a psychologist, and I also, um, I, I, the reason why I want to join the board is that I have a private practice in, uh, that helps children and teens in the Harlington community. And um, I see firsthand, I've been practicing for 10 years around the need uh, not only to have access to quality mental health services, but also for organization to have, be able to strive to have a good infrastructure to continue to help support their community. So prior to having my private practice, I was the clinical director at Judge Baker, which is a Harvard affiliated clinic. And I was an assistant professor at the University of Rochester Medical Center. So where I've done a lot of work around increasing accessibility in mental health services and um, making sure that organization are sustainable to be able to provide quality evidence-based care. So I'm hoping that I can help with some of my expertise to help uh, this organization. Great. Thank you. Okay, I will uh, turn to board members. Any questions or motions? And, and uh, before I do that, Attorney Cunningham, um, 
I was going to do a two at a time. Should we have a separate vote for each candidate? I think, um, Michael Cunningham, Town Council, I think that makes sense, Mr. Chair, just so that in case there are any issues with any no, you know, appointed members that they, the board could deal with them in turn. Okay, great. Okay, I'll now turn to board members. Mrs. Mahan. Should I start with Ms. Bain? Sure. Good to see you, Janet. Um, I'd like to move approval. Okay. Second. Great. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Okay. And that's uh, any questions, comments? Okay. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Helen. Um, th thank you, uh, Ms. Marsden. I, uh, I know you by reputation from my day job at the State House, and I know that Metro Housing does ex just wonderful work, and I immediately recognized your name. I think we know some people in common, but, um, and, and um, you know, Dr. Bain, I'm, again, just blown over, bl blown away by your resume and, and by what it, the values that it represents and the experience for, for both of you. So uh, we're just so lucky to have you both. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other questions or comments? We'll, we'll motion for Dr. Bain first. Dr. Bain, I, I saw the experience at the University of Rochester and um, prompted to say Meliora. That's a, ever better, which is a, a, a uh, University of Rochester slogan. So um, thank yeah. you for your interest and, and uh, all, all your great experience. Um, so on a motion for approval by Dr. Bain by, uh, let's see, Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Hurd. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right. Congratulations. And now we'll uh, accept a motion for uh, Ms. Marsh. Approval. Okay. And second. Okay. And uh, before I do that, I want to mention Janet Wooden, probably one of the most unselfish moments ever in the history of uh, mm -hmm. at least my time on the select board. Ms. Marsden had put her name in a, a couple of years ago for the Minuteman School Committee, um, saw the group and, and withdrew from consideration, but had expressed an interest in another committee. So happy that you came forward and are now going to be joining. It uh, looks like we'll be joining the board. So uh, thank you for your unselfishness and for your commitment to the town. Thank you. Um, okay, so on a motion by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. Helmuth. All in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations to both of you and best of luck. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, next, um, now Rash. Kachoria and Caitlin Sheedy? They will both be. Both by Zoom. Okay. Good evening. Good, good evening. This is Naresh Kachoria. I'm not sure if you want me or Katie to go no, first. Why don't you go first? Yeah, since you appeared first on the Zoom. Sure. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity to meet with you. My name is Naresh Kachoria. I've been an Arlington resident for 20 years. Uh, my previous experience has been more than 20 years in international development, focused on uh, social emotional learning and experiential education for youth in international settings. Um, but I learned about AYCC a little while back, and you know, as I approach the final stages of my career, uh, I'm looking to see how I can bring my experience uh, working overseas with youth and families uh, to a gem that's in our own backyard here. Um, and so I've been meeting with AYCC and Stacy over the past few months and really blown away by the work and the services they provide to Arlington families uh, and hoping I can contribute a little bit to the trajectory of the organization in the coming years. Great. Thank you. Uh, turn to, uh, actually, why don't, yeah, why don't we do it one at a time now since it's by Zoom. Yep. Uh, anybody with the questions, comments, motions? Mrs. Mahan. <clears throat> I'd like to uh, move approval and ex extend our thanks for uh, coming to this committee that we're reconstituting. Um, I'm really excited by the, the quality of candidates that we've appointed so far and that we have before us right now with Mr. Kachoria and uh, look forward to working with you all in the future. Second. Thank you, Mr. Mahan. I'm heard with a second. Any other? Uh, Mr. Diggins. Was it, do you got, did you get your second already? I got my second, okay, right. Mr. Hurd. Yeah. We're all set then, thank you. Huh? You can okay. third it. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, and thank you, Mr. Kachuri, uh, for your interest and, and for, it sounds like, your participation to date with the, uh, the Board of Youth Services as, as, as newly constituted. Um, and and uh, again, with all of the candidates here, very impressive resume, and, and we really appreciate your willingness to serve the community. So on a motion by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Hurd, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. Congratulations and, and best of luck. Thank you, appreciate it. Take care. 
you too. Okay. Caitlin Chidi. Good evening, Ms. Hi. Hi. Good evening. Hello. Um, I'm Caitlin Sheedy. I have been an Arlington resident for the past eight years. Um, I grew up close by in Reading, Massachusetts and lived in Washington, D.C. for about 10 years where um, I started my career in public health and did a lot of community-based work with youth there, um, volunteering for um, a program that promoted the social and emotional well-being of youth through um, running and mentoring. Um, so since moving back to um, Massachusetts to be closer to family, I've continued working in public health, doing research and evaluation for um, the state of Massachusetts, a couple projects, and at the federal level, um, a lot of projects focused on um, maternal and child health and behavioral health. Um, and I've been looking to contribute more locally in Arlington outside of work. Um, I have two young kids, who one who is just finishing up kindergarten at Hardy Elementary School. Um, so I'm pretty plugged in there and feeling um, really excited to at the opportunity to support um, Arlington Youth Counseling Center um, and feel I bring a lot of enthusiasm and, um, and energy and look forward to really supporting the mission of um, helping families in Arlington thrive. So thanks for the opportunity to be here. Thank you for your willingness to serve. Uh, Mr. Hurd. Thank you. Thank you for, as the chair said, your willingness to serve. And I would just mention, as we sit on this board, we see resumes all the time. And I always look for people from uh, Tufts that come <laughs> oh, through. <yes. laughs> and we have a lot of Tufts grads. And, you know, I see people from time to time. But I think you're the first person that I actually graduated from at Tufts with. So oh, I, don't know, yeah. I don't know if we ever came across yeah. each other back in the day, but I graduated 05 in Tufts too. So it's All good right. to see a fellow classmate serving on a town committee. So, But cool. again, thank you Very for generous. your willingness to serve <laughs> and move approval. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Uh, do we have a second? Uh, second by Mr. Diggins. Any questions or comments? Okay. No, no tough school fight song or anything <laughs> you want to break out into? Or? If there is, I don't know it. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, Mr. Chair. Oh, no, no problem. So a uh, motion for approval by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. Diggins. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. An unanimous vote. Congratulations Thank and uh, best of luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sure. Okay. And uh, Maggie Wan and Veronica Tivnin. Good evening, everyone. I'm sorry I could not be there in person. Um, thank you for the opportunity to serve as a member of the advisory board for AYCC. Um, a little bit about me. I've been a resident of Arlington for nearly 20 years, uh, where I have raised a family with my husband and two boys, both of whom attended Arlington Public Schools. Um, I have appreciated the growing strategic focus uh, both at school levels and at town levels through AYCC, focusing on equity in education and promotion of SEL learning and well-being of the whole child for every child in Arlington. Um, as the parent, you know, I, I have growing concerns about um, the immense needs facing um, our children and adolescents in the Arlington community. Um, just the escalating, rising mental health concerns, um, growing sense of loneliness and isolation, especially among boys. Um, and in my professional role, I've worked in the mental health space uh, for the past decade or so in various capacities um, as a trained mental health provider, addressing in, uh, these concerns, including um, in a direct service provider role in both school and community-based settings, as a program developer, uh, focusing on restorative and trauma-sensitive prevention-based interventions in school and communities, um, but also as an organizational strategic planner to um, increase operational effectiveness and efficiency, um, as well as putting on the hat as an evaluation uh, manager, um, assessing impact of um, uh, organizations that I've worked with. So I'm really excited to lend um, my knowledge and passion for mental health um, and serve in this role. Thank you very much. Uh, turn to board members. Mr. Hurd. I'll go for this one too. I may. 
Um, happy to move approval. I always see Maggie at the baseball field. Her son is an excellent pitcher um, and a great kid too. But you certainly have an incredible resume here and you're uh, well suited for this position. And I'm really excited that you're stepping up to serve the town as well. So happy to be able to work with you in a non-baseball related capacity. Same here, John. With approval. Yeah. And compliments to your sons as well. <laughs> Off the baseball field, be a less stressful environment for everybody. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, okay, so um, do we have a second? Uh, Mr. Helen. I'll, I'll have a second, and I just want to call out the, the really good work that Doc Wayne Youth Services do, mm -hmm. does. Um, again, I happen to have some exposure to that through my through my uh, day career, my day job, but um, you know, great reputation, terrific program, serving some of the neediest kids, and um, so delighted to have your expertise joining us here in Arlington. Thank you for the acknowledgement that Doc Wayne is wonderful in terms of using sports as a way to access, help kids access mental health care. Thank you for that. Okay, so on a motion for approval by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. Helmuth. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Congratulations and, and thank you for your willingness to serve. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, Veronica Tivnin. Good evening, Ms. Tivnin. Hi, good evening, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Veronica Tivnin. Um, a little about myself, I am fortunate enough to have grown up in Arlington, uh, my whole life there, and my whole, most of my professional career working for Arlington Public Schools, the last 15 years as the Dean of Students at Arlington High School. And so I was thrilled when somebody approached me recently and said, you know, the, the AYCC board doesn't have anybody from the public schools on their, their board right now, and we really could use a lens from that, from the school setting and, and what's going on there. Um, AYCC, I, I don't know if people in Arlington are aware of how lucky you are to have this organization. They serve our families and our students and do so much. We as the public schools lean on them all the time and they're always there to help and to support and, and lend a helping hand. Um, so I was thrilled at the opportunity to be able to maybe give back a little bit of my expertise of working with the students at Arlington High and um, giving some time to AYCC. And you can see from the people who have gone before me, I am honored to be able to work with, with this talented, amazing group of, of people and learn from them as well. So thank you for having me here tonight. I'm, I'm flattered to be here. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I mean, I'd like to motion, make a motion to approve. And, and I'll just add that I haven't said much or anything about any of the um, um, people that we are appointed, you know, and, and that's because the, the, um, the CVs have just been really, really impressive. I mean, I read them all, I mean, um, thoroughly. Normally I have something to say, usually about the appointees, but this, this time I didn't just because I didn't know where to start and stop, I mean, you know, I mean, we had a lot to go through, but, but you really are an impressive bunch and we are very fortunate I mean, to have I me, mean, all of you in town here working for this committee that is really worth the effort. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Mrs. Mahan? <clears throat> I'll second it and also add my thanks to Ms. Tivnin for your day job and now your volunteer job. And I think it, it's essential and vital that we do have um, a well-rounded group in the expertise you bring working day to day with Arlington's students and sometimes those who find themselves at risk. Your familiarity with um, sort of the makeup structure organizationally in terms of what Arlington does have available. Um, through this committee and or um, other committees that I know you interface with and are aware of. Sometimes that's the first 25% uh, of the battle is actually knowing where to go, where's the appropriate place to go for each individual with their specialized needs. So um, I definitely appreciate you bringing that um, to the group and I really look forward to see what um, all you newbies are gonna take on and, and do, but I know you do well and I think a sign of you all doing your job really well is it's, it's not something we'll necessarily hear about in the public and um, we'll hear it anecdotally, which, which is how it should be, so thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Um, yeah, and I'd also like to add, Mr. Tivson, thank you for your work in the Arlington Public Schools and, and uh, for your willingness to serve here. I do think it's important to have a member of the public schools on the Youth Counseling Center Advisory Board because there is a lot of interaction between the agency and the public schools. So thank you uh, for doing that. Um, so on a motion for approval by Mr. Diggins, seconded by Mrs. Mahan, all in favor say aye. 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 Great. Congratulations and thank you again. Uh, thank, thank you. you.
and before I move on, I'd be remiss if <laughs> you'll, you'll know why in a second. Um, so with the addition of the new members, the, the membership was actually added through the town meeting vote in 2023. And one of the interesting things that the Youth Counseling Center Advisory Board wanted to do was have both residents and non-residents who have an affiliation with the town. So the, there's a potential for greater membership, which was, was really good. But with the new members coming on, there were three members who were leaving the board after a long time of service. So I just want to recognize them briefly. They're not here this evening, but uh, Kim Kerr, Laura Pierce and uh, Mary DeCourcy are, are leaving the board. Oh, so, oh. Exactly. No, so they were they were holdovers while the this process was being completed at town meeting, and I think um, they they were happy to serve, but also happy to pass the baton to the to the next group. So, uh, with that, I will move on to open forum and uh, just a brief um, message before we invite people up to speak in open forum. Uh, except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or request. So with that, does anybody, uh, yep, come on, come on up. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for letting me speak. My name is Pamela Hauser, and I've been a lifelong resident of this town, namely 72 years, born and raised. I'm here to discuss the, pro the problem we have with the brick sidewalks from Mystic Street to Water Street and Pleasant Street up to Academy Street. They're a hazard, they're ugly, they're uneven. They're, I've seen people trip, and if you notice, I am one of those people. I was walking home, and I, instead of walking with my head down, which I usually do, I was aware of children, teenagers on bikes going up and down Mass Avenue on the sidewalk. So needless to say, I thought they were going to hit me, but they didn't. But it is a hazard. I was under the assumption that these sidewalks were to be replaced approximately four years ago, and they have not been done. The main part of the center looks fantastic. It's just that these are uneven. I have pictures to show you, if you would like. And I also have collected signatures. I live at Winslow Towers at the moment. And I have signatures from Winslow Towers. And also Cusack is um, getting me signatures and also Chestnut Manor. It is horrible. I know most of you probably get in your cars and drive where you want to go. That's not possible for a lot of seniors. I do not own a car. Because when I moved into Winslow, there was no place to park my car. And I'm sorry for the town of Arlington, but I refuse to pay them to park in their parking lot overnight. That's, it was at the time I moved in there, it was $365, which I do not have. I live on Social Security. And it's very difficult. But I would like the board the select board, excuse me, I was going to say board of selectmen, which I am more used to calling it, the select board to consider, please, dig up these brick sidewalks and put in concrete. They're a lot safer and a lot easier. They're loose right now, and with all the rain we're getting, they're going to get looser. So, please, if the money for replacing them was put in escrow, please take that money out of escrow and use it to replace these sidewalks. They're a hazard to the town, at the residents, especially the elderly and the handicapped. So I would like you all to take that under consideration. And thank you very much. Thank, thank you. If you have copies here, if you want to leave them with Ms. Marr or we I'll, can arrange, I'll leave we can with you. Um, yeah, I have copies attach them to our records. Great, thank you. By the way, just to let you know, when I went to my orthopedic doctor, he wants to do surgery to fuse my bones, which I refuse to have done. And this is all because of tripping on the brick. Oh. Tripping. And right now I'm taking cortisone shots for the pain. I will be walking with a limp the rest of my life, which Sorry is bothering me. And I use a walker when I go distances. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there anybody else in the chambers for open forum? 
Come on up. I have a question. I, well, I, I, actually, come on up if you. And, and just in terms of question, there's no back and forth during open forum, so if you have a I, statement I have, to make. Um, comments about the parking permit. Should sure. I make them now or at the agenda item that's forthcoming? Yeah, uh, ah, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, I think you should do it now because I don't think that's going to be a hearing. So if you have a quiet okay. comment, go, um, go right ahead. Could I share some of that? I have three minutes. Well, you have three minutes, so you can use it how you like. Um, so, hi, my name is Julie Doten. Um, and and I'm Michael Lynch. We're both residents at 150 Webster Street here in Arlington. Been residents for about three years now. Um, and we wanted to share our support for the overnight parking program. We've been part of the pilot for the last year. Um, we've been Arlington residents for going on four years, been part of the area for the last 10, also went to Tufts. Um, <laughs> no bias. <laughs> but um, we wanted to share some thoughts. Um, we read some of the concerns that um, were brought forth um, earlier when the program started and just being members of um, the program, we did want to share kind of our thoughts and also um, we looked at some data from census reports to see how uh, similar overnight parking pr uh, programs affect the neighboring towns. So um, some neighboring towns that do have an overnight ban similar to Arlington are Winchester, Belmont, and Lexington during the winter and neighboring towns that do not are uh, Woburn, Medford, and Somerville. So taking a look at the data um, across those towns and trying to understand some similarities. Um, we do feel that the overnight parking program does better support the needs of Arlington residents. Um, it will not inherently promote more car ownership. I know that was a concern and the data shows that it's actually more, uh, the cities that have an overnight parking ban actually have more car ownership per household than those without. And they actually can make roads safer to have um, on-street parking. And there's uh, some references that I can share that support that claim. And the data that we found uh, show that a lot of the, um, I don't have <laughs> uh, signal right now, but basically the um, neighboring towns that do have the overnight parking ban have um, a higher average household income and uh, much lower density of households and population than Arlington and similar towns without a ban, which would you know, correlate that Arlington residents need more flexibility and there are more renters here than those neighboring towns and they need more flexibility in their ability to park in certain places. The increased density would uh, correlate with you know, smaller plots and less availability for off-street parking. So a lot of the data suggests that Arlington residents do need this greater flexibility for parking options um, at their household. Um, so, and then just on a personal note, um, do you want to share kind of yeah. our situation? And so um, a lot of the lots in Arlington, as I'm sure you're all well aware, have been established for many years. And as a result, some of them are less uh, positioned to be able to support driveways and parking areas in our instance uh, our driveway abuts the neighboring property and on one side is the house and on the other is a large curb because we live at the end of Webster Street which does slowly descend on a hill. And so in our former vehicle we had a 2002 Jeep Liberty which is a rather small vehicle, could barely make it up to the driveway and we actually ended up having to replace the tires on that vehicle early because of the narrow driveway rubbed the sidewall of our tires to the point of damage. Um, so now we have a new vehicle and thanks to the parking program we were able to keep that on the street avoiding parking or any damage to that vehicle um, and would very much like to see that program continue into the future um, and appreciate everyone's time in hearing our arguments for the program. Thank you. Thank you for coming this evening. Thank you. Is there anybody else in the chambers who'd like to be heard on open forum? I don't see any hands. Anybody on Zoom? There is one member. Okay. Mr. Um, Mr. Diggins? Sorry. Could you request that they send us I mean, whatever it was? Yeah. It was yeah, it, yeah, if you don't mind, if you can right. either email right. it or, or you can arrange with Ms. Right. Mar. Right. Thank Great. you, Mr. Thank Diggins. You. Thanks. Thank you. Sure. Good evening. Hello. Uh, my, uh, hi. My name is Andrew Steinhaus. Uh, you just uh, spoke to my tenants, uh, Mike and Julie, who are the, I gotta tell you, 
they are the greatest tenants in the in the world. <clears throat> um, and I just want to verify everything that they said. We have it's literally right outside that window, a very, very, very narrow driveway. Uh, my wife and I also, with our cars, have had to replace the left hand side tires because it uh, rub to get up the driveway. They rub up against uh, the uh, stones that uh, are basically the, the pathway between us and, and, and our neighbors that we abut with. Um, and just jockeying the cars in and off the driveway has just been a little bit dangerous, a little bit concerning, and absolutely inconvenient. Um, we're really close with all the neighbors. The neighbors don't seem to have any problem at all with our uh, parking on the street. We've absolutely loved uh, the pilot program. And um, I guess um, I'm just here to uh, agree with Mike and Julie and say, uh, we'd love for it to uh, become permanent. Happy to pay uh, what looks like a dollar a night um, uh, or even a little bit more uh, to continue um, for the right to park on the street. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Scheinhaus. Anybody else, Ms. Martin? Seeing no hands raised, thank you. Okay, so that concludes open forum this evening. Uh, next, into traffic rules and orders and other business. Item 11 discussion and potential vote. Overnight, overnight parking pilot program. Uh, Ms. Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Ms. Maher, could you pull up that PDF for me? That I, okay, great. You know, and I think all my colleagues are probably looking at it um, anyways. You know, uh, and so uh, just briefly, I mean, we had 125 um, spaces I mean, that uh, we made available, permits that we made available, and people could you know, either park on the street or park and a uh, spot me in one of the lots me that they had reserved for them and um, as part of the program I mean, and um, as you can see we had about 70 um, to 76 people who took advantage of the program or who utilized the, the we, program excuse me sure. if we can just wait just one moment sure. just for the benefit of the people sure. watching too thank you sorry no problem yes sprung this on you sorry about that Well, that's pretty good. Yeah. Actually, my, my system just went a little buggy too, and so I'm not able to see anything. <laughs> so I may actually you end up. See mine? Well, and actually, I have some other notes. Thank you. Oh, you know, so. so thanks. Appreciate that. You know, mm -hmm. I do have a backup here. You know. Okay, Mr. Diggins, while you're looking for that, I just. Sure. I want to provide just a little bit of background. I'll go back. So this, the overnight parking pilot program, last June, June 26th, 2023, we approved a five-month pilot for temporary expanded on-street overnight parking. That ran until December 31, 2023. In December of, of last year, we extended the pilot until June 30th, 2024, and that's why it's up for discussion again, um, the program was limited to 125 new permits, and I believe the number is roughly around 100. Is that, or even a little less than that? That's correct. About 76. Okay. Yeah, 76. All right. Yeah. All right. And with that, I'll turn it back to you. Yeah. Mr. yeah. Thank Davis. you. Thank you about that. I mean, I don't know what happened, but anyway, so so we uh, so we had 70 who took advantage of it in the first half of the pilot. I mean, last year that went from August till December, and then 76. You know, uh, this year, I mean, that went from January 1st till. Um, then the June, uh, interestingly, you know, 22 people who signed up for it in the fall, you know, did not follow through in, um, 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 in the, this, this year, you know, uh, and, and, um, and they were, and I didn't have this on the sheet that I, I sent you all, but it kind of roughly split between the East Arlington and, and, and non-East Arlington. Uh, uh, and, but um, overall, in both halves, you know, or both halves of the pilot, the utilization you know, between east and non-east is about the same. You know, 54 to 46 percent for east versus rest in the first half. I mean, and 53 versus 47 percent for east versus the the rest in the second half. I mean, so um, it's pretty consistent. You know, uh, 
I uh, had a, I talked with the chief who also got feedback from um, Officer Rateau you know, regarding the second half. And uh, in terms of complaints, me, they don't really have a way of really, well, they didn't really record complaints in a way that would allow us to easily tease out whether you know, the complaints were really related to, to the pilot, you know. Uh, I mean, as far as um, uh, Officer Herrera could tell, I mean, the complaints seem to be coming from the same streets, you know, that we've been seeing, you know, even before the pilot. So he didn't notice any significant uptick, I mean, in other parts in, uh, of the town. You know, um, he apparently talked with the clerk. That's what the mail said. I mean, although we're a little uh, confused because we're thinking it might be the register, you know, but essentially there were uh, three to five complaints, I mean, a week, I mean, of people getting ticketed I mean, who had the permit. I mean, so Officer Roto says that just means that, I mean, APD needs to train the officers more, I mean, uh, when, when they go out, I mean, to ticket. Because still, the way they are ticketing is really based on complaints. If they get complaints from residents, I mean, I mean, about overnight parking, then they'll, and consistently, then they'll go and look at, at those streets, I mean, so that's the way to uh, deal with that, um, let's see. Um, yeah, I mean, so, oh, oh and um, Chief Flaherty said, I mean, her only concern, I mean, uh, about the trial um, is that we didn't have any snow emergencies, you know, this year, so they didn't really get to test me whether or not, I mean, how, how the program would respond uh, to that, I mean, uh, and, and she re emphasized that, I mean, the sense is that we, a lot of residents just don't know about the program. I mean, so, so some of the complaints she thinks are coming from uh, people who be, are seeing streets, cars parked in the streets, but they actually have uh, a permit. I mean, and so uh, I, I told her, I mean, one of the issues that we have in town here is, is communicating uh, with residents when we do something. I mean, we, we try our best, I mean, uh, we send emails, I mean, uh, uh, and, and, and we put it on the website, I mean, but the message doesn't get through her, her only suggestion. In addition to what we do is maybe send I me mean, uh, uh, a little flyer out when we send out tax bills, I mean, which I thought was a good idea. I mean, um, so my um, recommendation uh, would be that we extend the trial for at least another 12 months or make it permanent, you know, um, and as permanent as anything is. I mean, it's like, I mean, I mean, we do something and if something happens, then we, we make adjustments, I mean, and so, so but I, I would like to, for us to consider something a little more permanent because one of my thoughts is that maybe some people aren't taking up the program because I mean, they aren't sure if it's going to last. I, mean, I know of one person who, who pays for a spot who says that I mean, she will not give up that spot as long as she thinks there's some chance that the program will go away. You know? I mean, so, so there's that. Uh, the other um, suggestion is that we have 125 permits up now. We can maybe increase that to 150. I mean, now, given the utilization is still at 76 maximum so far, I mean, you can say we don't need those extras, I mean, perhaps we don't, you know, but I think it might be indicate a more of a commitment you know, to it because I think we have 300 slots potentially um, to, to use, I mean, and so we still only be at half of what we have available. Um, and in any case, we should just reevaluate, you know, and so if we were to do it for another 12 months, I would suggest that we reevaluate in about I mean, nine to 12 months, certainly after the next winter, you know, to see if, um, we'll see how many spots are being used, I mean, um, and, and there might, we might conclude that I mean, because of whatever utilization, I mean, the, the costs aren't as much as we thought they would be. We can maybe think about dropping I mean, the, the price. I mean, right now we have a hardship I mean, um, exclusion, for lack of a better phrase, so that if people can't afford it, I mean, and they are utilizing other programs, then, then they don't have to pay for the spot, I me. Mean, but it's a binary, I mean, it's either all or nothing. We don't have any sliding scales, so there may be people who are kind of on the edge I mean, who don't utilize it because, because $30 I mean, a month I mean, is, is make or break for them. So, so just think, think, we can think about that. And, um, and, and um, also my suggestion, and I think we'll be doing this anyways, is to have a larger, more comprehensive review and evaluation of parking in general. Uh, uh, and so, 
So I know the ARB really wants to meet with us to talk about the elements of parking, but I think there are other elements of parking that we could could discuss, me you know, but but certainly let's have a conversation with um, ARB because I think parking and, and car utilization does have uh, impact in, on on housing you know, and one of my big um, um, a strong feeling I have is that if we can make it mean easier for people to not have to use a car, you know, then that mean gives them more to spend. I mean they can afford for more housing, you know, and so so I think there are ways that our parking policies I mean, can be adjusted that might allow us to do some more creative things um, around parking that would perhaps reduce the need for people to own cars, but. That's for another time, but hopefully the other time won't be too far from now. And, and, and finally, you know, we have a potential vote now. Uh, we can go ahead and vote, you know. But I would also I mean, like to have maybe another little check-in forum um, with residents, you know, uh, and, and, and either uh, we could say we pull the trigger, but we're still following up with folks, you know, or we could wait until uh, our meeting two weeks from now. Uh, and pull the trigger. But if my colleagues were amenable I mean, to holding a forum, and I volunteer to do that because I like I like doing it. You know, I would probably go for it on on the, on the twentieth. You know, um, ten days from now on a Thursday. Uh, so, so that's it. Okay. Thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Diggins. So you've made a recommendation. Do you want to make a motion? Would you rather have discussion first before we get oh, to discussion motion? first? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, uh, Mr. Hurd. Thank you. Um, yeah. I mean, I think the parking pilot has been a success. Hopefully, we can wrap this up in less than 18 meetings to figure out the next the next branch of this but I mean I, I would be on board having I'm far away from my microphone having um, another 12 months to look at it I think everyone that's participated has really enjoyed it I was part of it um, I have a neighbor who has an overnight parking permit and they have a you know one of those small driveways that go under the house and that most of the garage is filled with stuff so um, it's been really beneficial to them and I think the numbers show that there's not an overwhelming demand for these overnight parking permits it's not enough cars to cause issues I think if this 76 cars on the parked overnight with permits there's probably still 500 more without permits that are parked somewhere in Arlington because that's just how it is. Um, so I, I think I'd be, I mean, I think upping it to 150 is fine just in case that some demand materializes for it. And I mean, I think the fee is good as is because I think it sets it in a I don't want to be overly onerous to residents, but we also don't want it the the f the next phase of this to fail because we waive the fee and all of a sudden you know 2,000 people come and get permits I think having a reasonable fee that accounts for the enforcement costs helps to ki kind of weed out people that don't really need it because we didn't really create this for people that you know just don't want to walk around to the driveway we created this for people that had a need like we've heard and I think for the people, for the residents that have been able to avail themselves of the pilot, in many instances, it really, really, really makes life easier, and that's why they do it. So, again, I'm happy to make a motion if these are the parameters that we want to go for to extend the pilot out 12 months, increase the number of permits to 150, and leave all other aspects the same. Correct. Yeah. Thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Hurd. Uh, Mr. Helmuth. I'll second that motion. Um, I think that it's it's worth doing this another year uh, for a number of reasons, Mr. Hurd cited, and you know also I think we really need to see what happens. I'm not exactly wishing for a hard winter, but, um, but, but for more snow so that we can see how that part of the program works and also see you know if there's any issues with with you know particularly with cl compliance and, and the snow emergencies and and how that that part of it works is really important uh, i also i think the, the price is good it's it's uh, one of the reasons i signed on to the program was that the price is high enough that it's an it's a disincentive to do this frivolously 
Um, and I think the hardship exemption takes care of cases where that, you know, where, where it needs to. Um, I, I don't know that I need to do this this month, but for myself, before I'd be prepared to vote to make this permanent at a later date, I would really like to have a public hearing and a public forum, and one that's well advertised. You know, I, 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 I realize that that will result probably in a similar discussion to the public forums that we had before, uh, but I think if we lay out the questions carefully and thoughtfully to say, you know, this is what we've done and, and you know, could you try to focus, uh, I, I would pay more attention to comments um, based on, that are very specific to the impact, positive or negative, of the pilot program. Um, and I, you know, I'm sympathetic to Mr. Diggins uh, and, the, and APD's point that it is difficult to know you have a complaint, you know, what, if this, is this a legally, maybe they're complaining about a legally parked permitted vehicle or not. A couple of areas that uh, I would appreciate collecting more data on, and, and, and if, if it's possible over the next 12 months, assuming the board supports this motion, is um, although it is hard to know what a complaint is really about, we do have the ability with data analysis and GIS to look at where the locations where we've issued permits, those can be entered into, those can be mapped. Um, we can map complaints. And, um, and I'd be happy to help out with this. I don't have any particular expertise, but maybe I could help with some of the questions to say, you know, is there anything that we can learn, anything out of the ordinary that would point to potential problems we're not seeing if we actually took the, took, made the effort to, to do that study? Um, and I, you know, I can be talked out of it, but that's just a suggestion. Um, certainly not part of a, of a motion. Um, the other question I have, um, and this might be something for my colleague or for the town manager is, this could just be refreshed my memory, but did we consider if there are streets that just are unsuitable because of their of their layout for any overnight parking, that you know that any overnight parking would cre would create um, undue problems for residents moving around, getting out of the neighborhood, going to work? Um, do either of you have have an awareness of that? Is that something that we've we've accounted for in this program, where we could basically exclude? Um, certain streets from the program if we needed to, or, or if there's even a need for that? Happy to say I'm not aware of there being any streets that are currently excluded from the program. And, and do you, just in your awareness and your familiarity with the town, would you have any concerns that there could be streets where, you know, having any overnight parking could be, could be uh, a difficulty? I think that potential does exist based on the uh, available curb to curb width, but would require a bit of engineering analysis and potentially just, uh, you know, one side only or mm -hmm. uh, as a consideration. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Diggins. No, no, please. No, I was going to say, I mean, there are some streets, for example, like Medford Street now. If someone wanted a parking permit in Medford Street, they wouldn't be able to park in Medford Street because. There's no parking at any time. So oh, right. there are so streets that will be the tool where you we have, have that type to, of situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I just want to point out, but uh, Mr. Diggins? And I can certainly ask me, you know, me the chief, me to ask um, Mr. Um, Officer Rato if he is aware of any streets, me that he would you know, recommend that we exclude, you know, so. so well, yeah. and, and thank you, thank you, thank you all. Yeah, you know, I think, and, and um, Mr. Uh, Mr. DeCourcy kind of reminded me of the obvious, which is that we do have tools that to address that in general, and that you know, if it was so, so much of a problem, we wouldn't want them parking during the day. Um, instead, so we could, we could just do that or restrict parking in the street outside of this program. So, um, so that's it. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Uh, okay, yeah, I mean, um, Mr. Hurt? Well, I was just going to, similar to what Mr. Helmuth just said, is that there's also required there's parking requirements that yet that aren't always followed, but you can't legally park within so much so many feet of the center line. I think the street that we're all probably thinking about is right here on Academy where it you know, kind of gets, mm -hmm. that would probably be a street for consideration for what you're talking about. But you know, if somebody's parked on one side of the street, you actually can't legally park on the other side unless there's enough clearance. So I mean, I don't think the APD <coughs> is routinely tickets people for that. But, I mean, I think there are tools to address it. So you know, entire street doesn't have to get blocked off. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. I just have a couple of comments, and, and I was one of the initial proponents with, with Mr. Diggins, and I, I support a 12-month 
extension we had done five months then we did six months and and now it seems uh, like a good idea to extend it I'm not quite ready to call it permanent because i do think there are, are some issues that need to be resolved some of the things that i've heard just questions about you know, whether a commercial vehicle could be one of the the vehicles that receives the overnight parking sticker and that that question came up there are some issues on certain streets um that I, I, I think you, you look at it on a case-by-case -case basis. But, um, and just to be clear, when we extended this last time, I believe it was $150 for the period between January 1 and June 30th, so it'd be $150 per each six-month period. Is that if we go oh. through the next year? Or, or is that, Ms. Maher, is that? That's correct. We have been doing a dollar a night. It just so happened that 150 was from the one to the Okay, all right. So dollar day. All right. Or a dollar. Fair enough. So we like, okay. All right. So a little bit more. Okay. Yes, all right. Um, so with that, and I, I would support that. I would support having a forum. I think we might need one later with more publicity for it and maybe hear from more people. I, I don't think it's necessary, in my view anyway, to do it this month. I think maybe later in the year as... as we go through the program one, but also maybe make the public more aware that we're looking for more feedback. And I appreciate everybody in the community who's reached out. We had two people here this evening who have benefited from the program. I've heard from people who've benefited from it. I've heard from some people of concerns just on, on parking on their streets. And, and I encourage people to still get in touch with us, comments either way, because it helps us form the policy. So. Uh, unless there's any further, uh, Mr. Diggins? Well, I'm, I'm fine with not doing a forum, especially if we're not going to make it permanent now. I mean, I would like to see, I mean, as Mr. Hellman kind of hinted at, I mean, that we have it a little more, a little more structured with respect to topics, I mean, and I'd like to see us maybe broaden out, you know, the, the discussion, you know, because uh, like I said, there's lots of aspects of parking that we can discuss, I mean, and it could fit in I mean, with, I mean, um, ARB and maybe some other things that we have in mind for the town. So. So yeah, uh, so uh, if no one seconded, I'll second it. I, yeah, I had, no, I had a second for Mr. Helmut. So let me, let me just review where we are with the motion. It was a motion by Mr. Hurd to extend the pilot program for 12 months to increase the number of permits to 150 and all other aspects of the program remain the same. In, in, in the fee being a dollar a day. A dollar a day, oh. yeah. And that was seconded by Mr. Helmuth. Unless there's any further discussion, I think we're ready for a vote. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Right. So it's been extended. If I could ask Ms. Marr to maybe contact the individuals who already have permits just to get ahead of it that way on, on the extension period. Great. Thank you. Right. Uh, item 12, request for an additional on-street overnight parking waiver, Jim Ballon, 30 Swan Place. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jim Ballon, 30 Swan Place. Um, I actually last was here before you all in 11 years ago to talk about parking. Um, I believe Mrs. Mahan was the only one here at that time. Um, but for the rest of you, I wanted to just give you a very brief summary of what the issue is on our particular street. Um, so I've lived with my wife and we've grown, uh, raised three children um, at our house for about 30 years next year. Um, house was built in 1900 obviously before zoning, before there were even cars. Uh, we have no off-street parking. There is no, play, there is no way to put in off-street parking. Um, we also have, so there, I, I understand there are around a dozen or so streets in Arlington that have these unique situations where there is not enough off-street parking. And the board has issued waivers um, for various properties on those streets. Swan Place is obviously one of those. Um, we have one more unique problem, which I really want to raise to your attention now, which is we have a four-hour limited daytime parking. So, and I think this is important because we're not, I'm not talking about the overnight parking pilot program you were just talking about because that doesn't really help us. We have uh, four-hour daytime restrictions. Um, my wife and I both bike or take public transit to work, as does my kids, my adult kids who live there. Um, so we leave the car there during the day. Um, I don't want to have to drive my car just because uh, I can't park it legally on the street and I have no other option. Um, so just briefly, so I had this one permit in 2013 when this program started. Um, I only had one car at the time. I don't know if I requested more than one, but I only had one car, so probably just one. 
Um, in 2019, so I said some of my kids, adult kids, moved back in with a car. Um, I requested a second permit that year. Now this is where it gets a little murky because uh, I believe I worked with M Marie Kropelka on that issue. Um, and she, my recollection is she said if the police and fire department are okay with it, um, she could work to get the approval done. She took care of that, um, the approval was done. I believe I paid the initial 160 fee for that second permit. Um, and I had the permit, the two permits for that year, 2019. Um, the next three years, 2020, 21, 22, I had two permits paid for each permit at the renewal fee of $75. Um, this year when I went to renew the two permits, uh, I was told that um, there was no record that the select board had approved two permits for our property. Again, I don't really know how that happened. Um, I believe Ms. Kropelka took care of that in some way. I don't know if she ever got the board's approval. I don't, I personally did not appear before you in 2019, so I don't know. Um, so I just, so that's my request. My request is for a second permit. Um, I would like to be approved, ideally, at the renewal rate of $75, because this is the fourth year I'm requesting this permit, um, and I believe I did pay the initial fee. I just very quickly wanted to run down a couple of things I included with your packet. Um, so you have uh, emails from fire and uh, police departments saying they have no objections to us having a second permit. We don't have, we live at the very end of Swan Place. There is no parking issues there. There's plenty of parking um, during the day for anybody who wants it, really. Um, there is something I got from the town. Uh, I don't think this made it into your packet. I can provide a copy if you want it, but it's basically on-street overnight parking requests from 2008 to present. Uh, present seems to go up to 2019. There's no date on this, but I, I assume that's the time period. Um, of the 55 or so requests, um, the board approved about half of them. Um, every request for Swan Place, and there were seven of them during that time period, uh, was approved. Um, and then specifically, the comments note the exemption includes daytime residential time parking. It's the only street in Arlington that I have seen that approval for. Um, in some cases, um, some of my neighbors were approved for two cars because they requested two cars. Um, I hadn't at the time. And the other thing I included with your packet, and again, this is really just background information, but I got the permits from 2018 to 2000, I guess, to this year. Um, just to show that in the vast majority of cases, or at least close to half, I think, um, many households have received more than one permit. Two permits, typically. Uh, I have no interest in requesting two, more than two permits, um, regardless of how many of my kids move back home. Um, but I um, wanted to point out, again, that uh, these so my permits are on this paperwork if you want to see them, 2019, 20, 21 and 22, um, we have two permits. Uh, he didn't actually get one last year because my son, who is the main driver of that car, was away. So that's the only reason I didn't get one last year, or a second one last year. Um, and I'll also note in this paperwork, if you look at the one for 2022, there's a, they added, uh, the parking department, I guess, added that year in their paperwork. Um, a box that would select whether the select board had approved the permits. And for my permits, it does have the box checks that you approved permits for two cars in 2022. So um, that's pretty much my request. Again, I want to just make it clear the overnight pilot program is um, great, but that isn't going to help in our situation because of the daytime parking restrictions. And there is you know, no way for me to get home, I work in Boston, to get home in the middle of the day to move the car every four hours. So I would greatly appreciate your approval for a second permit. Um, and again, at the renewal fee, it would be my request. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bellin. Um, I don't know, if, Mr. Feeney, I don't know if there's, I don't, probably nothing that's, that this is just directly to us. Uh, and I'll turn to the board now. Uh, Mr. Hurd? Um, now, I guess I'll ask this question of Mr. Diggins through the chair, as I don't have the answer in front of me, with the parameters of the overnight parking pilot. Um, did we limit it to one per household for, yep. as part of the pilot? Yes. Right. Okay. Well, we have discretion in this area to, you know, we've, I think we've 
in past years, we used to have like these strict parameters, like, all right, one person, do you have a driveway, blah, blah, blah. And we're trying to move away from those, or at least I am. Uh, I don't want to speak for the board. So, I mean, I'm happy to, in a, certain situations, say, all right, based on the facts, it looks like this uh, second permit is appropriate for this location. And I think you've met those facts with kind of a word to the wise to anyone else that, you know, this isn't a situation where we gave one person two permits, everyone else gets two permits. It's kind of a, a case by case basis. I used to work, I worked with a builder at one point at a house right around the corner from you that did have a driveway, but we pulled made the mistake of pulling into the driveway one time and we had to back all the way out, I think almost to Mass Ave to even turn around. So that's the street the topography of the street is definitely challenging right there. And, you know, so I certainly can understand that. Um, I guess, Mr. Chair, to the town council, is there anything before us to decide on a daytime waiver or is this posted as a overnight parking permit? <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair. No, I think the application as it stands is for the daytime. Um, but as, as you mentioned, Mr. Hurd, pursuant to the board's parking policies and regulations, there's significant discretion available yeah. to the board. Okay. I mean, I'm happy to accommodate what needs to be happened for the daytime waiver too. I just, I don't know what the, whether it's, you know, removing that portion of the street from a four hour parking or you know, again, and we've had a few of these situations where I think we've we've created some sort of a daytime park parking waiver, but with the caveat that you don't own the spot, somebody else can come and park there for eight hours. You know, you get you gotta, and you can't put a picnic table out there in the winter. So, um, but you know, whatever the avenue, like, so f for me, I'm happy to approve to the second permit and you know whatever the mechanism is to make a waiver for this location I'm happy to support that too because I think it's warranted given the situation and the challenges with the street okay thank, thank you mr. Hurd um, so it's a motion for uh, Mr. Oh, attorney, Cunningham. Oh, attorney Cunningham thank thank you mr. chair I think understanding mr. Hurd's question a little bit better I think there is not it's not before the board right now in terms of establishing a waiver for a particular location. If the board wanted to set that for the future, we could do that. Um, what's before the board right now is this particular application for a second permit for the... Right, that's, yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, sorry no, if I didn't, got them. Yeah, but that was my question is whether we could even address the second question. And, and I apologize, Mr. if I didn't understand your question. Yep. sorry. Uh, Mrs. Maher? Um, I will second that. And... I'm going off my memory, which is usually not too faulty, but I believe we have taken this step within the past year to a resident, um, a couple who read our uh, bylaws. Uh, I believe they were on Herbert Road. If someone is thinking my memory is incorrect. Yeah, Brooks, yeah. Brooks Ave. Brooks Ave. Um, and so I think we have the framework for that. Um, so I, I definitely would second this, and I don't know what the comments were about Mrs. Kropalka. I kind of took them, but I'm sorry. I didn't mean anything disparaging about her at all. I'm just saying she sounds like she, she was, was the one help helping you. me, and I can't obviously yeah. verify what she did. Yeah, she was always very professional. No, she was wonderful. And maybe to her, with. Hand, her downfall was trying to help people. So I, that's probably true. Okay. She was. So I took a little umbrage to that. But she was wonderful. I apologize. That, but having said that. Um, Sorry, I can hear her in my head. <laughs> and I can't call her on the way home. Uh, I'll second it, and I, I, I would just say if it could comport with uh, similar to what we did for you, think it's Brooks Ave, not Herbert Road, right? Yeah. Um, the, but but it, it, it could be, I remember a discussion about right. a concern about daytime parking. Right. Just, just so we have some continuity, but then also, as Mr. Um, Heard and uh, Attorney Cunningham have suggested as we move forward, make sure we really codify and or solidify so we do have a process and we do. Yeah, I'm sure. So, and just, and Attorney Cunningham can 
correct me if I'm wrong, I think what Attorney Cunningham is saying is that my motion would be to approve a second parking space and just for the point, you'll have to come back on another meeting to request the waiver for, because it wasn't noticed for a waiver for daytime parking. So you'll just have to work with Ms. Marr to come on a second agenda for the waiver for daytime parking. So my motion is to approve a second overnight parking pass. Can I just ask one additional question? My request to the board initially was for a second permit, which was for both overnight and daytime parking. Yeah. So it, I don't know what. Well, it, it, yeah, just to clarify, Mr. Bell, the way it went on the agenda is a request for an additional on-street overnight parking waiver. So that's we're limited by what we put on the agenda this evening in okay. terms of that vote. Um, okay. Uh, any other questions from uh, Mr. Diggins? Well, oh, actually, I was pointing to, point to okay. Mr. Uh, Mr. Oh, Helen, okay. and, then, and then you can come back to me. Sure. sure. Thank you. I'm uh, happy to support this. I just wanted to further note that uh, since uh, Officer Rateau's uh, notice of no objection was, was mentioned, that his, he actually specifically re re referred to no objection to the issuance of a second overnight permit. Um, and, you know, I'm happy to consider the waiver of a daytime, but I want to make sure that we understand and maybe, maybe, maybe we can request to the town manager or to town council that we understand the reasons for the daytime parking, parking uh, prohibition on the street and can make an informed decision about, about any kind of explicit waiver of that. Um, sympathetic as I am to, to the applicant's personal situation, of course, we want to help as much as we can, but we also want to make sure that we have our eyes open about the, the reason for those conditions and what we would actually be, be doing. Thank you, thank you Mr. Helmuth. Um, and, and just before I turn to you, Mr. Diggins, it's coming back to me in Brooks Ave. What we gave an overnight parking permit in that location because it's near Ale Life, there was, a, I think, a four-hour restriction. And so the, I believe there were tenants at that location. They both worked at home, and they were told, you can park overnight. One of the concerns they had is when they parked in the driveway working with their landlord, the space would be filled before they could pull the car out, and they were told that you may have to move the car during the day because of the four-hour situation, but you have the overnight parking permit. So that was the, the history that, uh, those, that was a couple that was actually on Google, Google Maps uh, for that location. They went in front of the, the house when the car went down the street. Uh, Mr. Diggins. And, and thank you, Mr. Chairman. So this is all part of, I think, having a large discussion about parking, you know, because uh, we, we, he's wanting a daytime parking permit, I mean, which we, he will pay for. You know, and so I imagine it'll be. I, my understanding is that you are paying for both now, anyways. I mean, and so, so I mean, I, I certainly would also like to explore. I mean, how we price that. I mean, I know I'm going a little bit off the uh, agenda, you know, but but I think we kind of maybe need to bring I me mean, daytime and nighttime, I me mean, a little more into equilibrium, or maybe even I me mean, something different. I me mean, because I mean, there's the tension between. I mean, wanting to allow more parking in order to, I mean, one advantage is you can allow more housing, you know, uh, uh, but at the same time, we, we, we definitely don't want to make it hard to get um, through on the streets, you know, so there's that, that safety element to it. So those, to me, those are the two tensions, and I'm going to stop talking because I feel as if I'm going outside of the scope of the agenda item, you know. Okay, thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Diggins. Just a question for you, Mr. Bell, and then you mentioned that you don't have parking. I just want to clarify for the record, there is a driveway next to your house, but that driveway serves 32, 33, and 34. So one place, is that right? You right. don't have any rights to park there? None. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, so on that basis, I, I will go along and, and um, support Mr. Hurd's motion. I, I do recall another situation where there was prior, I think it was board action, it was a property up on Paul Revere Road where a second overnight permit was granted and here there is no parking so that to me distinguishes um, this as well so unless there's any further comments from board members a, on a motion for approval for overnight parking by Mr. Hurd seconded by Mr. Helmuth all in favor aye aye, aye. okay thank you thank you okay next item 13 for discussion and approval permission to remove invasive species from town properties, David Morgan, environmental planner and conservation agent. I don't know if Mr. Morgan is with us this evening, but I think Ms. Crowd is here to uh, make a presentation. Hi. Jean's here too. There's three of us. 
There are three of us. I don't know. Okay, go, go ready. If, 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 yeah. Can we drag a chair? Sure, go, go ahead. If there's three of you, if, if, come on up. And if you could each introduce yourselves and then yeah. have the presentation. Elaine Crowder, uh, I'm the founder of the Arlington Mass Invasives Army uh, at 2 Glenbrook Lane. Uh, I'm Karen Blum. I uh, live at 16 Perth Road and have been involved with Army recently. I'm also in Army, Jean Wildman, and I live on Kilsyth Road. Thank you. So um, we, we are coming to you because um, actually, I should get up. Oh, no, no. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Props. <laughs> yeah, here we go. I brought, I brought some show and tell. <laughs> um, so I don't know whether you've seen this, uh, this sign around town. David Morgan uh, created a, um, uh, an invasives awareness campaign uh, a couple of years ago. High school students um, piloted it. And this is the sign that he, that he created, which is designed to be an eye-catching kind of thing. The idea of the, of the um, initiative is to paint some invasive plants pink, um, leave that, put a sign there, and just to kind of create curiosity, and then um, uh, leave it for a while, and then remove the invasives and, and remove this particular sign. Um, it's possible as part of moving this into neighborhoods that we might put an additional sign at the end just to kind of remind people, hey, this is what it looked like before, now this is what you see. Um, so that's, uh, so we had interest in a particular location and I'll let, um, I'll let Karen explain what that interest is um, and it turns out that that location is a uh, select board property. So our, our request is um, to be able to um, do some removal of invasive species on, uh, it's the corner of Rubley, Lancaster, and Hebert. It's a little D-shaped right. naturalized area. Um, and it's a nice little spot and I'll let Karen talk. Um, so actually, one of the neatest things about this little spot is it's about one lot down from the Hibbert Street Playground. Um, about 25 years ago or 20 years ago when my daughter was little, I, I live on Perth. We used to walk all the time to there. And nowadays, I started actually walking a lot by there during COVID. And uh, when I heard what Elaine was doing, I've been noticing a lot more about what's garlic mustard, what's black swallowwort, why shouldn't it be there, why are these bad things that will kill butterflies? Um, so I developed sort of a particular interest in this little spot and thought, well, I'll ask Elaine about it. And David helpfully found out, David Morgan said, uh, it belongs to the town, that's the select board. So we are coming to ask you permission um, and particularly the sooner the better because as the swallowwort grows, it grows very quickly. It starts making pods almost, you know, it's flowering right now. So the sooner we can get approval, the sooner I can paint some things pink and then hopefully dig them up. And Jean, who is my back street neighbor a little bit, but we actually have some conservation. Yeah, we have conservation. That is, <laughs> that is at a there. 60 or 80 <laughs> degree angle, so we're not doing a whole lot there. But we're both very interested in making this flat spot much better. You don't have to worry about that. It's not your baby. So that's why we're here. And I wanted to also mention um, that uh, David actually thought, it, I think after checking with um, Mr. Feeney um, about uh, res being respectful of select board time on, for this kind of invasive and not, you know, is it something that would need to become to come before select board on a continuous basis. So I believe his idea and the memo that you got from the planning department um, was one asking for permission um, for any select board property, but I want to clarify that because um, Mr. Cunningham made me aware uh, that the town garden is actually, actually part of select board properties. And so our request is not in, uh, for the town gardens, any of the formal gardens at the town garden. Yeah, 
Um, and before I turn it to board members, I, and I, I saw that request, and, and I, I, I see the, um, the wisdom in not having to come back all the time, but I also think it might be helpful. We'll address this one this evening to get a list of just, you know, working with David or, or town manager's office, just what the parcels are, because some of these parcels, it's unclear whether it's our jurisdiction or not, one, and two, just to get an idea of where they are and, and what size. And, and I note this one, it, it's approximately 4,400 square feet. It's not a buildable lot. It's, we've actually got a call a few years ago on this parcel. Um, and I don't know if it was one of you, just the concern about it not being kept up. The person who called that in knew the town owned it and was concerned about the upkeep of it. So I think it makes perfect sense for these type of parcels, but I think just for our benefit, knowing what that list is, doesn't mean you come in all the time, but just having something for us, um, and that's just for other board members to consider as we discuss this. So with that, I'll um, turn it over to board members for questions or comments or motions. I, oh, before I do that, I'll turn to Attorney Cunningham. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I think your suggestion that a, a parcel list be created be also would be helpful the extent that some of these areas and parcels may be within the jurisdiction of the town manager and there would not be a need for uh, to come back to the select board necessarily but uh, I think that parcel list creation is a, an excellent idea thank you, thank you. Thank you I think it'd be helpful for everyone yeah okay yeah. great okay uh, uh, mr. Feeney thank you mr. chair and I was just going to add to Ms. Crowder's point that when speaking with uh, mr. Morgan about this it was largely about there being a very narrowly tailored window for when you can truly be effective with the removals and if we missed that window based on the timing of a board agenda it could put you know the group who's willing to put forth this massive volunteer effort on our behalf essentially a year behind in their effort while uh, invasives are allowed to sort of flourish if you will but I, I would agree that knowing which properties are being contemplated is important, and I think we could endeavor to uh, generate that list. And thank you, Mr. And, and just so, when does the window close, like this year in terms of time? Well, uh, basically, it depends on when a particular invasive species goes to seed. Okay. So garlic mustard is just about closing. Um, it has pods on it. It is not dry yet. When it gets dry, they go everywhere. Um, uh, and black swallowwort has a time period that goes from about June when it, it, it emerges at the end of May, and the pods develop and start to release somewhere at the beginning of August. So there's a window there. And it, and it's just, it varies. Uh, we've been working at McLennan um, for woody invasives during the winter, uh, which is at that period of time, it's easier to get into the, um, the wetlands areas where, um, or you know, uh, it's, it's actually round leaf bittersweet now, um, and especially multiflora rose. Both of those are very, very prevalent at McLennan, and it's just easier to get them out during that period of time. Okay, all right, great. And, and I'd, I'd just say, in terms of putting it on the agenda, I'm happy to work with you to get it on sooner rather than later if, that, if that's where the board goes for, for some of those where the time time is an issue. So uh, with that, I'll turn to uh, Mr. Helmuth. Thank you. I'm happy to do anything to contribute to the war on garlic mustard and black swallow wart. <laughs> um, I, as a gardener, I have dealt with both of those things myself continuously. I know very much what you're saying about the timing. Um, and Mr. Chair, I might suggest uh, a motion. Well, I'm going to make a motion and then... Um, Please talk me out of it um, if town council or the manager or the members think it's a bad idea. And that is to approve uh, the removals immediately on, on this site at um, um, Hibbert and, and Rubley. Um, and then, you know, if we wanted to reconsider a lar our larger list at our, at our next meeting, um, we can still do that with some, spe with some speed. Thank, thank you, Mr. Helm. I uh, do we have a second? Second. Okay. Second by Mr. Hurd. Any other questions or comments from... Board members? All right. So in a motion by Mr. Helmuth, seconded by Mr. Hurd for approval of this part. Does this have an address or it's just here? Yeah, I think the I mean, address the might idea be is there. We zero, can put that in zero, Lancaster. zero Lancaster. Okay, it zero Lancaster. Zero. Um, yeah. For approval of this program, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. So that's approved and we'll look to work with you on, on the other parcels. 
Great. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thank you for Thank the you. presentation. Okay. Uh, now, the next one, there's a couple of us that may be leaving the room here. Uh, <laughs> so item 14 is for approval letter, letter of support and right Mothers Out Front Mass Clean Heat Clean Air Campaign. I'll turn to Mr. Helmuth and then I have my own comment. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. I do need to recuse myself from this discussion uh, due to my employment by the state legislature because um, the uh, petition specifically um, requests communication and petition to our legislators and under the state conflict of interest law, I can't, um, I can't participate in that discussion. But Thank you, Mr. Hamilton. I am also going to recuse myself from this um, because of work I do for National Grid. So I'm going to turn the meeting over to Mrs. Mahan for item 14. Very lonely over here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ann Mother's right. out front right here, so we're all set. Yeah. If you could just introduce yourself and my name is Ann Wright. I live on Milton Street, have for thirty one years. Um, and I filed the agenda item, um, but my colleague Ann Boland is going to give a little presentation and we have some slides to go along with it. Okay. Yeah, so I'm Ann Boland, um, and I live in on River Street, where I've lived about 16 years. And I am with, we are both with Mothers Out Front, and we're here to ask you to endorse the letter that we had included in your packet, uh, the letter to our legislators in support of the future of clean heat bill and the memorandum on gas system expansion. So we at Mothers Out Front are fighting for a livable climate for our children, our grandchildren, and all children. And we feel like this is a very important and crucial issue. And we also know that Arlington is committed to transitioning to net zero, transitioning off of the gas system. We have many initiatives in Arlington um, that, uh, well, let's talk about the gas system. It costs a lot. It uh, harms the climate. It harms the health of people, animals, and trees. It is explosive. And we are spending billions to maintain this system, which we will eventually be moving away from. Uh, you can put the next slide, I think, thank you. Uh, so heating buildings accounts for 30% of our emissions throughout the state. Actually, in Arlington, it might be a little bit more than that. And uh, Arlington and the state of Massachusetts are committed to net zero by 2050. And Arlington, like I said, has shown this commitment through our Electrify Arlington program, our net zero plan, our clean heat, uh, clean fossil free fuel demonstration project. Um, and we also have a, now a grant for a feasibility study for network geothermal in East Arlington. So we're very actively working towards moving off of the gas system. However, this transition away from gas cannot happen with one individual or one community. Despite mounting concerns about gas and its environmental impact, the gas utilities continue to invest billions in pipeline replacements across the state. These replacing pipelines is not an effective way to fix our gas leaks. Only 9% of gas leaks are fixed through pipeline replacement. And this underscores the inefficiency of this approach. Repairing gas leaks is much more efficient. Yet gas utilities prioritize capital expenditures because of the financial incentives, favoring infrastructure expansion over maintenance. The next slide, please. So this is the gas system enhancement. This is the gas system enhancement program called GSEP. And all of these little circles is where the gas company is planning to replace pipes. And it is estimated that it will eventually come to $40 billion. And uh, just in Arlington alone, the next slide, please. This is what is planned for Arlington for this next, for 2024. 
It's over $6 million. They're estimating the cost, over $6 million, to replace six sections of pipe on six different streets. And this is all for something that's going to be obsolete within 26 years, by 2050. And we are paying for this through assessments on our gas bill. So we would like, we're, try, we're supporting the Future of Clean Heat Bill, and that's the letter that we'd like you to sign. And the Future of Clean Heat Bill will help to uh, prioritize repair of gas rather than the gas lines rather than replacing them. It will limit the cost recovery for gas for, for putting in new pipelines so that they cannot get money for that after 2050. It requires gas companies to submit transition plans to the Department of Public Utilities. And it also addresses worker retraining. It incentivizes investments in cleaner energy, like network geothermal. And it actually will allow the gas, gas utilities to have, uh, to be able to provide thermal heat as opposed to gas. And so it, we feel like this is an equity issue. This is a systematic way to, to help us transition away from this, this system we have now, which is happening in a piecemeal basis, transitioning right now. So this is a systematic way to do it. It's, it, it, there's a lot of equity. It will set up funds for lower socioeconomic groups to trans, help with their transition. And it provides a framework to include the gas utilities in this transition. So we feel that this is a really important bill. And we urge you to sign this letter of support for the future of clean heat and also the moratorium on gas system and expansion. This was what I was talking about with the ground source heat pumps and network geothermal, which is having water underground that will come into in neighborhoods will use that for their, for their heat. So, um, and then what's the next slide? Ashley, I'm sorry, it was like, okay. So this is our, also we want to triage, repair large leaks and repair them, but we really need to think about transitioning off of gas and the, the future of clean heat bill will do this. And the moratorium on ga the gas system expansion also prevents us from putting money into obsolete, uh, obsolete uh, structures. And it's another social justice issue because these big pipelines and compressor stations end up going into uh, low income neighborhoods. So uh, we'd like this, uh, this letter will be sent to our specific legislatures and also sh legislators and also shared with key lawmakers and it underscores Arlington's commitment to sustainable energy future and we call upon the state to provide a framework and incentives for a just and utility scale transition to clean heat by passing the future of clean heat bill and also to pass the moratorium on gas system expansion. Does anybody have questions? Thank you. It's my job. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, any questions? Oh. Mr. Hurd? I mean, I don't have any questions. I'm happy to support this. Um, I can make a motion to empower Mrs. Mahan to sign this on behalf of the select board. I have to swap out the name for Mr. DeCourcy. Um, mm -hmm. And then, I don't know, a little editing, like wordsmithing type thing. Like mm -hmm. the town of, I'd rather just say the Arlington Select Board than the town of Arlington Select Board. I think just flows better. It doesn't in any way mm -hmm. affect the, the content of the, of the letter. And I, I know this was just an opportunity to put this together for, to see what the meat and bones should be uh, for the letter. So, you know, I would make a motion to, have Ms. Mahan sign this on behalf of the select board subject to any small editing that we have to do before it goes out. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. So, yeah, I'm happy to second it for purposes of discussion. And, uh, and so I'm um, ask questions. I mean, so um, have, have you presented this material to me and I'm Senator Friedman, Representative, so they are aware uh, of this? Yes. Right. Uh, 
Yeah. Sean Carbali has um, sponsored it also, co-sponsored it. Yeah. Uh, I don't think Representative Rogers has yet. We, he knows a lot of the information. We've asked him to sponsor both bills. I don't know about the moratorium bill, um, but I know he has, last I checked, he hasn't sponsored the future of clean heat. We have met with him about it, and in theory, he's behind it. And right. We've met with Senator Friedman's staff also. Uh, she does not make a public commitment. She's on the, the Ways and Means Committee, right. yeah. and this is actually going through the Ways and Means Committee, right. yeah. but she is aware that of it. Yeah. It seems like it's already there, you know. So, yeah, I have to say, I mean, generally, you know, I have a lot of respect for our, our um, our reps and, and, and senator, you know, and and I'm generally not inclined to tell them what to do, you know. Um, I mean, in fact, I'm usually inclined to ask them, you know, um, get advice from them, you know, uh, about issues like this, especially things going on in the state legislature. Uh, and so, so that's my kind of reticence to being about letters like this. I mean, and going back a little bit further. You know, I mean, my colleagues have heard this, you know, from me is that, you know, I think in my first year on the board, I mean, I came to the board, you know, with a letter, me, from the Real Estate Transfer Fee Coalition, you know, because they wanted me to get, I mean, the select board to sign off on a letter on the selection, on some legislation that uh, we were working on, you know, and the board, me, gracefully approved of it. And I have to say, you know, I, I had serious regrets, you know. When, as soon as it happened, I mean, I felt that I'd done the wrong thing, and I wasn't quite sure, I me, mean, why it was that I felt like I had done the wrong thing. I mean, partly I felt that, I me, mean, uh, that I'd done a disservice to the board. And I could go a little more in detail, but I want to hold back a little bit. Uh, and, and so I said to myself, I'm not going to do that again. You know, and 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 um, and and since then, I mean, uh, we've had another case where a uh, proposal for a letter came up. I mean, uh, I think it was for um, the. Um, Life, you know, and and I abstained on that because I felt that we once again I didn't want a, for the board to be put in a position where we are a, asked to support something on on behalf of uh, a, another group. I mean, and I'm sorry if it's not coherent enough, and that's because. I'm not saying exactly what I want to say because I'm afraid if I do, the language will be a little bit too strong and I don't want to offend anyone. It, um, uh, but since then, what has emerged to me, I mean, especially since um, in the last six months when we have gotten a lot of emails and letters I mean, um, from people supporting the issues. I mean, in one case, I've, I strongly supported the issue I mean, and it was uh, around, um, oh gosh, what was, um, it was a climate related issue. Yeah. Um, well, it was the, um, the gas, not the gas, the, um, the um, electric, me, where we, yeah, the contract. Yeah, the contract. I mean, so I was totally supportive of that. I mean, we got a couple of hundred letters at least, I mean, uh, uh, and, then, and then there was one on, the, on the, the resolution. And what became clear to me is my approach to how I make decisions, I mean, as a leader, and I've made it clear to folks that it isn't the number of letters I get, I mean, uh, the number of people asking about the supporting the issue or, or making an argument for the issue or how loudly I mean, they ask for it. I, mean, I look at the argument I mean, and I assess that argument, I mean, and then I weigh it against the arguments against it, and I make a decision because I feel that the decisions I've, I'm asked to make, I mean, they aren't the ones where I am trying to gauge how other people feel about it. I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not putting my finger in the wind, I mean, I'm not trying to conduct a poll, I mean, I'm really trying to make the best decision possible given the information that I have, I mean, and that's actually how I want I me, mean, our leaders in the State House, I me, mean, to make decisions. I don't want them I mean, um, be figuring out how people feel about things. I want them to analyze I me mean, the arguments about it and make the best possible arguments. So it's not this this influence I me mean, situation where I mean, we're trying to get a whole bunch of people I me mean, to support something and let them know get supported. And the other side is trying to get people to say we don't support it and then they're trying to like who's who's winning here? I just I don't want the leaders to make decisions that way. I want them to make the decisions based on what they think is the right thing to do uh, based on their values. And I elect them based on their values, I mean, and, and the extent to which I feel they're compatible to mine. I mean, so I can't, I feel that I can't say that's the way I'm gonna do things, 
mean, and then do something that kind of counters that, you know. So, so I support what you're doing, you know, in terms of this legislation and what the, um, it's trying to achieve. Hey, but I also me am going to say that I trust me the people that I elected, you know, um, at least two, in the case of two of them, uh, and, and say, look, you'll make the best decision. I mean, you understand what's going on there. You understand the issues probably even better than I do, you know, because they really do have to make these decisions. I mean, I'm, I'm taking what you've said. I mean, I, I agree with most of it, I mean, probably all of it. The only reason I'm not more confident is that I haven't done more of my own research, I mean, but I trust that they and their staff has. I mean, and so my general approach on these is, is just I me mean, to not put any pressure on them. I use pressure with a small p, you know, and, and so, so that's why I mean, I'm gonna abstain on this one too and probably anything else like it that comes I mean, across, you know. Could I, make, desk, yeah. could I make one comment? Am I allowed to? Sh sh I'll allow it, but it's yes. <laughs> just briefly. Sure. It, it, not a question, I, just you want to make a comment. Yeah, I respect your thinking about the differentiation between the two bodies, Arlington Select Board and the legislature. The trouble is, is that um, what they do absolutely affects Arlington. We will not be able to reach our net zero goal, which is a mandate that was voted in, if legislation, statewide legislation like this is passed because it's a statewide system. So um, yeah. it's yeah. all connected. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. I was the alwife. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 um, and, but, but I do respect Mr. Diggins' position and I understand um, the thought that you've put into it and, and, and the sincerity. Um, and I you know, never tried to, for a fundamental principle, uh, belief, argue it or, or take issue with it or, or, or anything else because um, I, I truly respect my colleague. Um, and I'm, I only bring up Al Wife because I've been there and I understand um, the significance of, of, of getting a, a select board, a city council vote for individual representatives and senators have been in there. Um, in the state house, I know how it works. A lot of times, you can't just do the right thing because it's the right thing. Solely on that, if it was, there'd be a lot more great decisions um, that, that I believe come out of the state house. And I do know, you know, whether I've worked on minimum maid or, or the CSO issue or uh, um, Route Two or whole, 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 uh, uh, but other myriad where. I was a member of the board, and a few times I wasn't, where I did ask for the board of selectmen and now the select board to endorse something, because it does carry weight um, with our uh, legislative delegation, sometimes on things that they're 110 percent behind, and that helps them to say, as well as you know, our colleagues, our elected officials on the select board support this, and sometimes when they're um, on the fence because they're really not as close to an issue as a member of the select board is. They're in the state house and they can't know all things for everything. And sometimes if they're on the fence, it's 50-50. They have seen um, something from the select board, which more times than not, either themselves or in the case of the senator, her staff, um, would contact a member uh, individually or collectively. So I do see the value of it. Um, so. Um, and, and I do respect Mr. Diggins' opinion, and I'll tell you that, you know, if you ask him to do something individually um, on this, uh, that's something that, you know, time permitting uh, on what he agrees with, which sounds like just about everything, um, I know he'd, he'd be willing to do what it is he can do in his own way. So, um, with that, uh, and um, I don't need an answer to this tonight, and perhaps there is no answer. But on uh, Mr. Hurd's motion, seconded for discussion by Mr. Diggins, with the amendments to uh, change the language and add my signatory line, um, is there something else we should be doing on things like this? Putting an asterisk or a footnote on the, or can, we can just keep their names up there and they're okay with that. Okay. So, any further questions from my colleagues? Um, okay, and a motion by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. Diggins. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? 
Uh, those abstaining? Aye. And we have two of our colleagues who have recused themselves. So that's a 2-0-1 vote. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And let, please let us know what else we can do. Okay. Including Mr. Davis. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's okay. So. Yeah, no, totally, totally. No, no, thank you. Uh. Sir, since I heard about that mustard plan, I'm very thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> Is that you? Did, is that you or you wanted it down there? Okay. I do, you wanted okay, it. Okay, yep, fine. Oh, you know, I took my folder. Can I borrow your agenda? Just... Yes, and your gavel. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Okay, next is item 15 a memo from the Transportation Advisory Committee. I believe I'm just, I'm locked out right now, so I'm about to. So I don't know. If, um, Mr. Phoenix, did you want to, or is there someone? Yeah, someone. Oh, there's someone. Mr. Perfect. Max Tudis. All right. Yeah. Good. So we have the chair of the Transportation Advisory Committee with us? Um, it's going to be Jeff Max Tudis. Oh, sure. Uh, okay. The... Yep. Good evening, Mr. Max Tudis. Good evening, Good evening Mr. Mr. Chair, members of the board. Yeah, if you want to just let us know about the recommendation and the study that was done up at the Wachusett and Appleton Street. Yeah, be my pleasure. Um, so the TAC was referred this issue. Um, it's a, a safety issue at um, the six-way intersection of Appleton, Wachusett, Dow, and Valentine. And the current um, operation is it is a five-way stop. Um, so all the approaches have an existing stop sign, except the Appleton eastbound approach. So all the, all the rest have stops. That one does not have a stop sign uh, control. Um, it's hard for drivers to see pedestrians and some vehicle movements as they approach the intersection on that eastbound approach. In fact, there's a, a warning sign on that approach that says danger, slow. You know, as a, as a warning to vehicles as they approach that intersection. So it's, it's, it's known as an issue. Uh, the TAC work, working group conducted um, observations during peak periods of the intersection. We conducted new traffic counts and we did a capacity analysis testing an all-way all -way stop, including a stop sign on that Appleton eastbound approach. And we found no significant impacts on vehicle delay or queuing uh, for that approach. So uh, to improve safety at the intersection and be consistent as a, in a, an all way uh, stop intersection, we'd like to recommend uh, to the select board that we, um, that we st install a stop sign, a stop bar and in advance uh, a stop sign, a head sign on the oh, yeah. Appleton eastbound approach which would make all, all the approaches uh, stop control and also install um, all-way stop plaques on all the six um, approaches, which is uh, consistent with the manual of uh, uniform traffic control devices. Um, yep, so that's our summary of analysis and those are our recommendations. Great. Thank, thank you, Mr. Max. Just a quick question before I turn to the board. On the stop ahead recommendation, is there a specific location for the, is that at the top of the, the hill as you're coming up Appleton Street or, or it, it's within a range of? There's, there's some flexibility with that. Uh, again, according to the MUTCD, so that, that would be installed uh, based on those guidelines, um, you, you know, by B, uh, DPW. Okay, thank, thank you. Uh, turn to board members, Any, Mr. Hurd. Um, I'll move approval. I, you know, my kids roll through this intersection all the time. It is, and I use it a lot. Um, I'm not sure. I know there's certain situations like Downing Square. We, we've left one road that just kind of runs into the intersection, and I'm sure there's traffic flow reasons for that. But I think here, 
I mean, everyone, when I come down to Appleton that way, I stop anyways. So I, I don't think it's going to have much impact on traffic flow and anything to create a safer environment for kid crossing is is good. This is certainly an intersection that was just too big when whoever designed the streets way back when. I'm sure Mr. DeCourcy has some uh, stories of just growing wait. up yeah. r right around the corner. Um, but, you know, I think this is a great step in the right direction, so I'm happy to support it. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Uh, Mr. Helen? Uh, happily second that. Uh, I know that the chair might prefer to, but, you know, that's usually for protocol, you know. Uh, but I look forward to the chair's comments. Um, just a question for Mr. Maxtudis. I think is it reasonable to defer consideration of the traffic oval or scoring off the intersections because of counts. But just, I'm, I'm curious, you know, sh should we have later realization of, of, of even greater safety issues and safety needs? Did you get far enough to determine if a traffic oval or squaring off would be feasible? Um, I mean, I know they're expensive, but in terms of uh, would it be MUTCBD compliant and would it likely be effective? Yeah, good question. Um, so we look, looked at some of those ideas on kind of a preliminary basis. So there's some advantage to um, tightening the uh, the intersection. So as, as you know, it's it's very wide, very wide for pedestrians, very wide for vehicles. So tightening some of those corners up, as we call them, curb extensions or bump outs, would um, reduce the size of the intersection and make the pedestrian crossing shorter and all the conflict points and decisions are shorter for, um, or, or more appropriate for vehicles in the intersection. So it would have benefit um, you know, one idea we looked at was, you know, actually closing the Valentine Road um, approach and combining that with Dow Street, still providing access, of course, to uh, resident driveways. So that kind of would remove one approach. Um, the roundabout traffic circle, it's, it's difficult because of all the approaches to get the right deflection angles kind of in a, in a roundabout, maybe a traffic circle, but you can't make it too small. You don't want people going the wrong way maybe some drainage challenges. So we didn't get too far along with that. Um, so I would say those options are, pro you know, so some of them are feasible or require more engineering analysis or design um, as to um, as to what the details of those are. And as, as you mentioned, it, you know, it, it would not be inexpensive to do to do any of these things at this location. Yeah, no, that's that's helpful and insightful. And thank you for that. Um, thank you very much for the high quality work and the m number of hours that went into this to you and your colleagues. And, you know, I think I'd just say, kind of keeping in mind that immediately prior discussion that um, you, we can look at this as let's try this now, you know, and see what happens and see if there's any, any help. And, you know, no, keep in mind that there uh, may be some options, uh, particularly with squaring off intersections, that um, if we have the ability or the need and the priority and the funds, um, in the future that that can be consideration. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Helmut. Then just to, if, if we could, on, on, Mr. Diggins, did you have any comments? Oh, no, 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 I, I... Okay. Um, Ms. Mark, could you pull up, it, it, it's page three of the presentation from TAC, just so we're clear for, this is more for the public's benefit maybe, but. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't give you advance notice on this, but it, it, it's the diagram of the intersection. Okay, so it, it, just so the eastbound Appleton, just Mr. Max, if you could, there, there, as you can see there, there are six streets coming in, and the eastbound on Appleton Street is, um, is that coming from West Street to, to Tab, just, just so I'm yes. clear? It's, a, it's in the upper left-hand corner, this diagram. Yep, okay. right there. All right, yep. fine. Yeah, 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 good. Okay, and every other one does have the stop sign. And just mm -hmm. one question there on, in years ago, that, that crosswalk, and maybe with a stop sign makes more sense, but that crosswalk across Appleton, that never was there years ago. There was always, people were always discouraged from don't cross there because of the, because of the curve. Maybe with the stop sign, it, it, it will make more sense. I don't know if there's any, Thing that you looked at in terms of the the crosswalk placement as well. 
Um, so that, the stop sign will definitely make that crossing safer. Um, a, a stop bar is generally uh, placed four feet behind the crosswalk where it is. Um, we didn't look at relocating the crosswalk. That's something we could, you know, we can coordinate with DPW on um, if we think it needs to be re relocated um, in coordination with the stop sign and the stop bar. It just that, that was always tricky there, just in terms because you know the bus is coming around, um, mm -hmm. heading over over towards Warchusett. We're always coming at, at pretty good speed too. So, um, yeah, and I'm, I'm happy to support this as well. I'm, I'm going at the risk of just making everybody groan. Back back in the day, Mrs. Mahan might remember this, but when we were in sixth grade, the sixth graders crossed the students going to the elementary schools, and that was my intersection. Wachusett, but there was only two crosswalks there. You, you cross people at Wachusett and then coming across Appleton over over to the right, and it was it was a tough intersection. And the, uh, the police lady, Mrs. Marino, was at Florence and Wachusett, and I always wondered why she wasn't wasn't here. And they sent us out for it, but uh, there was no accidents when we were there. But it's a it's a tricky intersection. I'm glad you looked into it and happy to support it. I would say I, I do remember at the beginning of sixth grade you got the orange. <laughs> Like clip poncho like thing, clip. Th then you know it was very empowering. Yes, yeah. to have that type of power. Yeah. So anyway, so that's it. So thank you for the presentation. Um, and you had to be a tough kid to carry off that badge, but we'll yeah. Yeah. go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> uh, or, or just be the only sixth grader who lived near there. But, uh, <laughs> but anyway, okay. So I I had left my pen in the back. On the motion, by Mr. Hurd made the motion for seconded approval. Seconded by Mr. Helmut. And it was seconded by Mr. Helmut. Thank you, Mrs. Mond. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you, Mr. Mixtus. Yeah, I'm sorry okay, for the welcome. delay in getting this before us with town meeting. I know you had done this work in, in April, and just because of our schedule, it's just on now. But we appreciate uh, your efforts on this and the whole committee. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Great. Okay. Item 16, uh, future select board meetings, including town manager goals. And if I could turn to Ms. Mara, right now, we, other than our meeting two weeks from now, there's nothing scheduled yet for That's the summer. Right. Okay, all right. So we probably want to look at a date in July, one meeting in July, one meeting in August, other than the goals session. Um, so if, I'll just put it out to members, I don't know if, if you look at your schedule, Maybe the middle of July, unless people have a problem. Uh, Ms. Ms. Mark. Not that it should be guided by just me, but for July um, 14 to 18 is, I'm out of, I'm, I'm, that week is cl close to impossible. For okay. Me. Out of the state on vacation. I don't know what anyone else has for July. Okay. So if we looked at that, how, how is the, we're meeting on the 24th. How is the 22nd for? It's my friend. Okay. Okay. Is that okay? Oh, oh, thank you. Okay. So let's look at July 22nd. And then in August, how does that look for the, I don't know, let's say the 12th or? I'm not there the tw that week. Um, 19th? How's the 19th for everybody? Good. Okay. So if we did the 12th and the 19th, July 12th, August 19th, Mr. Feeney, I, you and I can talk. I mean, we don't usually do the goal session on a Monday night. We can do it really any time that's good for you. It requires a little bit of advanced work on your part. I'm thinking in August um, at some point, but maybe what we could do, you and I can talk, come back to the board uh, at the next meeting with the proposed date. Sure. Uh, and, Mr. Diggins? And I'll just say, even though we don't have to do it on a Monday night, I mean, Monday nights are nights that I tend to keep clear, I me mean, for select board stuff to other nights of the week for me on various weeks or, or stacked. I will make this a priority, you know, and so, so it'd be, I'd be hard pressed to say I'm not going to do a meeting because of these other conflicts, but Mondays tend to have no conflicts for me because I reserve them for okay. us. Yeah. All right, no, thank you, Mr. Diggins. And, and what we've done, and this is Mahan, you can, I, I think what we've done in the past and this is, start at like six o'clock at a, and just have a, an, an earlier session just related exclusively to the goals. Yeah. Okay. Um, why don't we look into September just to get September yeah. on the board. Yeah, and <clears throat> we me. also 
during the month of September, the redevelopment board would like to meet with us. I have to talk to Chair uh, Zembury about uh, potential dates, but what if we looked at the 9th and the 20th, and 9th and the 23rd? How does that look for? Uh, it looks pretty good, although I think we should uh, start looking into holidays. I mean, so um, um, Yom Kippur, you know, Rosh Hashanah, I mean, just let's double, if we can, do a quick check on that, you know. Yom Kippur looks like it's the evening of October 11th. Oh, so it's late. And All right. so is Rosh Hashanah's in October. Yeah, okay. They both last year was early. Right. So when we hit October. How are those dates? Are, and Rosh Hashanah's also in October. Oh, okay. so oh. um, or Wednesday, it, I'm sorry. It's fine. I'll, I'll probably be out of town on the 9th, but that's just one member. So I don't mind if you. And that's that whole, yeah, okay. Mr. Chair, I would likely be out of town on the 23rd, but able to participate remotely. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I guess there's the 16th and the 30th. Yeah, I'm just a little worried about the 16th and the 30th. Yeah, That's I'm a little too. late to start the first I'm, meeting in September. I think there might be some wisdom in just doing the 9th anyway, um, so that you, people, business aren't held up, you know, yeah. after, yeah. The, after the summer. Common break. Vicks and stuff. That's yeah. fine with me. Okay. I know you will somehow. All right, let, let's fine. hold those dates and we'll take a look to see if there's. In, Sure. Any other conflicts? And then we'll get back to you on the goal session and on the redevelopment board sure. uh, joint meeting. And maybe that would be one for the 16th. And then when, um, sometime in July, if you and the town man, oh, I'm talking out of turn, sorry. Oh, on okay, the goals go meeting, if, um, I know in the past they've ex existed in the bowels of Mr. Chapterlain's email. And sometimes, whatever's the most up to date select board goals, right. if we can have that like at least a week, week and a half in advance to look at along with it, the, the whatever yeah, is the most recent right. town meeting member goals, which again, I think would be in Mr. Chapdelaine's email because we did not do it with Mr. Pula. That's right. But um, it's, meaning if it, we're going to do it on a Monday night, which is fine. Um, I know we have to get it by Thursday, but if there's any way we could even get it a week before or something, because it's, it's yeah. a long yeah, document. It's a big document. Yeah. Okay. All right. Great. Okay, so do you, uh, Ms. Martin? I was, I was just going to note that the goals from the last time the board was in front, it was in front of the board, is available online, and I can email it to you, Mrs. Mahoney. Perfect. Okay. okay. All right. So if we, so I think we're set on dates for now, and I'll report back on the 24th, but that covers us for the next few months. Good. All right, next is new business. Uh, Ms. Martin? No new business, thank you. Attorney Cunningham? No new business, thank you. Mr. Feeney? No new business. Mr. Diggins? No new business. No new, hmm, no new business. No new business. Mr. Helm? No new business. Mr. Hurd? I wouldn't dare. <laughs> no I, 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 I have just one piece of new business. Sorry. I thought Mr. Hurd might take this, but I, 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 um, I want to congratulate. It, it's been a big night for Tufts, but the Tufts men's lacrosse team won the Division Three National Championship a couple weeks ago, and the reason I bring it up is one of the captains on the Tufts team was Jonathan Kerr from Arlington. His mother had served on the Board of Youth Services, and the Kerr so family was down there to celebrate with the team. So congratulations to Jonathan. And uh, with that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Okay. A motion to adjourn by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Diggins. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting's adjourned. ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help.